Hello, in this video I want to talk about a particular trick in astrophotography that I personally wish I knew sooner. Because this technique allows you to essentially double the focal length of whatever you are using to photograph the night sky, be it a telescope or just a camera lens, without making any sacrifices whatsoever. Sounds crazy, right? So hear me out, let me explain, let's jump straight to it. Alright, so typically if you would like to double the focal length of your scope, you could use a Barlow lens in terms of telescopes or if you're using a camera lens, something like a, an extender that you can put between the camera body and the lens. And I have tried that for night sky photography and it kind of works, but it has some serious drawbacks. You are putting more glass in between the lens and the camera, which makes the image a little bit worse. Sometimes some aberrations may pop up that they would otherwise not be present if you are just using the lens itself. But more importantly, it darkens your lens. So if your lens, for instance, is an f5.6 focal ratio, if you throw in a 2x extender, it suddenly becomes an f11, which for nighttime photography is kind of a disaster. So. What else can you do? Well, you could just crop into your image and by the factor of two and that's it. That would essentially be like double the focal length. But of course, doing that, you're losing a lot of resolution. And in fact, the loss of resolution goes by the factor of which you cropped in squared. So if you crop in by the factor of two, you are losing resolution by the factor of four, which again degrades the image very, very quickly. So if there only was a way to kind of I don't know, maybe upscale the image by the factor of two before cropping in by the factor of two. That would kind of leave us with the same resolution that we had before, but essentially we would be like double the focal length, sort of equivalent. So is there a way to do that? There is. And you may be aware of several different applications that offer upscaling using AI or some other fancy schmancy technologies. Even Lightroom recently got an update with, uh, I, I think it's called Enhanced Details or something, which creates a brand new DNG that is twice the resolution, well, actually four times the resolution is twice the width and twice the height, which means four times the original uh, number of pixels. And there are also things like Gigapixel, uh, Topaz Labs, Gigapixel AI, and even in Photoshop, you can do some basic upscaling. So this, this procedure is not, is definitely not new, but let's think about what these programs actually are doing. So let's think about a grid of pixels. And if you want to upscale them, you basically need to kind of spread out these pixels. And then in between every two pixels in every row and in between every pixel in every column, you need to fit in another pixel. And then by looking at that, you can see that you are having a lot more gaps than you have the original pixel. So you need to figure out the values of those pixels. And you only are keeping one fourth of the original actual data in your upscaled image and three fourths you have to kind of figure out. And these kind of programs that I have mentioned before, like Gigapixel AI, the enhanced details, AI, whatever, they're kind of guessing, you know, they have been trained by looking at some images before and afters. They are trained. This is how neural networks and artificial intelligence AI works. But in the, at the end of the day, it's just guesswork. And this is not what we want for astrophotography. I'm, I was telling you in the intro that you don't have to make any sacrifices and guessing pixels would be a sacrifice because you would end up with three fourths of your pixels pretty much fake. So here in astrophotography, we are at a unique position where we can take advantage of something. So think about it. If you're taking a lot of sub exposures to, to stack them in post production, to reduce noise, etc., etc you can take advantage of one unique thing because if you are stacking those exposures, let's take a look at the grid of pixels again. And if you are stacking, we are basically putting exposure over the exposure over the exposure and, and then we are kind of um, taking some sort of an average. But if those images are not perfectly lined up and in reality, it's hard to get a perfect alignment. So if there's a slight shift between all of these sub exposures, the software would need to realign them and then put them back together. If you just put them uh, one on top of another and they are shifted a little bit, look what happens if you stack enough of the exposures. Suddenly all of those missing pixels that we have, we had gaps in our upscaled image can be filled in with actual data from other sub exposures. 
And this can happen accidentally if you, for instance, don't have a good enough polar alignment, you have a drift in, in, your, in, your, in your shooting sequence, or maybe you're even shooting untracked without any tracker or equatorial mount whatsoever, you're shooting untracked, taking like hundreds of exposures, the night sky is changing its position. So then when you put it back together, you need to realign it and chances are that you will be able to, by the alignment process software, can actually figure all this out and reconstruct the missing data and essentially double your resolution. And of course, you don't have to do this manually in any way. You can use what is called a drizzle integration that does the exact thing that I have just described. This drizzle integration is a built-in feature into PixInsight. So if you don't have PixInsight yet, you can try out a trial. They have a 30 or maybe even 60 days at least 30 days trial, so you can try it out. And drizzle integration is really amazing. Take a look at these two images. The image on the left is the original stack of Pleiades that I have shot a couple of days ago. And then the image on the right is a drizzled image. And if I really zoom into those images, you can see that the image on the left starts to fall apart. You can see individual pixels, but the image on the right looks phenomenal. And this is all thanks to the drizzle integration. I'm not gonna go into details how to exactly pull that off in PixInsight in this video. Maybe I can do a separate video. But if you are using an equatorial mount, if you're guiding and all that, you need to be also dithering because this allows for this kind of a shift between sub exposures. So then the software can figure out those missing details. And I have a video about how to set up dithering, even with a simple tracking mount like a Skywatcher Star Adventure, you can check that out. Uh, right here if you want to. But yeah, I wish I knew about drizzling sooner because now I don't have to think about getting a huge scope or some other way to kind of punch into those smaller galaxies or maybe smaller nebula in the night sky that I really, really am dying to photograph for quite a while. I can just use that technique and my existing lenses to punch in to get closer to those targets on the night sky without losing resolution, without losing the focal ratio that I have in my lens. This really is a game changer. So I wish I knew this sooner. Now you know it too. And yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think about that. If you like this video, please give it a like. I would really appreciate it. And also consider subscribing to my channel. I'll be posting a lot more videos like this regarding astrophotography and that kind of stuff in the future. And hopefully see you next time. Clear skies and bye-bye.